I'm in downtown Paducah, Kentucky, along the waterfront. This is where the Tennessee River uh, empties in, or uh, uh, flows into the Ohio River. So they, the two rivers come together here. But uh, I'll see more of that. I'm going to go to a river museum here, and I'll get more details on that. But before I go inside the museum, I want to look at this uh, riverfront road here. Uh, this is a wall that was built by the... Uh, Army Corps of Engineers, and I'll get more on that probably inside the museum, how much money and how long it is. But all along the river, they have a wall and they have uh, pictures all along, and I'm going to pick up some of these. But it's so cold outside that I'm going to shoot some real quick and then get inside the building. Walking along the uh, riverfront, the river's right on the other side of this wall. I want to get a, a few pictures of this just because it's so cool. But uh, once I get inside the museum, I'll find out the details on what this wall cost, how long it took to build. But we're going to uh, just see some of this stuff. I want to get down to the opening so we can see the water on the other side of uh, on the other side of this wall. Now here's a pedestrian doorway through here, and then you can actually drive through right there. Here's the river. It's the Tennessee and Ohio River come together right here. Any of you guys watch my videos, I'm always fascinated by, by, by the river, by lakes, rivers. Listen to that. All right, let's go into the, uh, into the museum. The museum is just beyond my van. See the black van and the white vehicle? That little small, tiny little building. But I did want to get that because I'm such a history buff. I love history. And we'll see about the city of Paducah. Where we're going is the River Discovery Center. It changed its name recently. It was the uh, River Historic River Museum or something like that. Yeah, I'm going to make a quick pass through here and uh, just get my bearings and then I'm going to come back and shoot individual spots. I'm actually inside the, uh, the museum right now. I sat and watched it, like a 20, 25 minute Paducah film about the Ohio River. Its early growth to its location. That's worth going just by itself. There's a of picture of Paducah. The Ohio and the Tennessee. I'm just walking through the museum looking at the different uh, items in here. The, uh, even today the river plays a big part in the city of Paducah. You can see here from the barges to the rail cars transferring stuff. Check out this river river boat. What's the name of it here? Pick up those lead shoes. Check out these lead shoes. This was a 500 year event, the flood of 1937. Here's the details of it. I grew up in a riverfront town, Mankato, Minnesota, and my senior, junior year in high school, 65, we had a great flood. They had all the, uh, I think it was 65, I'm getting old now. 
But all the uh, juniors and seniors went out in sandbags during the school days on the uh, Minnesota River. Our town was where two rivers came together also, the Minnesota River, the Blue Earth River. But here, the uh, Ohio and Tennessee River come together. And like I said, this was a 500 year event. That's why those walls I showed you earlier, they were built in, uh, I think, like within five years by the uh, Army Corps of Engineers. I want to try to find the uh, the amount of money spent because it was some, some large amount even in that time. Here's some information I was looking for, the cost. The 1937 flood resulted in the loss of hundreds of lives, 400 million property damages. In the Flood Control Act of 37, Congress appropriated $24.8 million for the construction of levees, flood walls, and drainage structures to protect cities and towns within the Ohio River Basin. That's where those walls we see outside is part of that. One more time. Never. This is pretty cool. See the boat on the surface? Now watch, it goes underneath the water. Another angle of that, the barge and the cranes, the Ohio River is and then the railroad cars. Quality construction aggregates. All major metropolitan areas up and down the Ohio River have a major dredging operation. I had grandkids with me today. This is a hands on play area. So bring your grandkids next time you're in Paducah. Driving along the wall, this goes on, I don't know how many miles for a long way, but there's individual uh, pictures, murals, of the different life of this, of the city. I'd get outside and walk, but it's too cold. <laughs> it's so cool. All right, we're coming to an opening, and I guess they closed this up during flooding. I thought it would sort of defeat the purpose of the walls. There's the river. All right, this is... Uh, this is the uh, wall to wall portraits of our past. Now, I, I don't know if I can get to the, give you the sensation of this, but this goes on. Look at this here. This riverfront is just beautiful on its own. The flood wall, Paducah's. Eight million dollar flood wall built by the U.S. Corps of Engineers is 12 miles long and protects the city to a height three feet above the 1937 flood level. The flood of 1937 could not occur again in Paducah because of the flood wall, TVAs, dams, and other upstream reservoirs. In all, the flood control has cost TVA almost 200 million. Now, the 1937 flood, the Ohio River Valley flood of 1937 was the greatest natural disaster in the history of the U.S. and drove over one million citizens from their homes. When the Ohio River reached its crest in Paducah on February 1937, the water stood at 60 feet. Over 90 percent of the city was inundated. 27,000 people were evacuated and damage exceeded $22 million.
Alright, that's the end of this video. Subscribe, like, comment, you know the drill. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.